Hi everybody, Emma here from Kids Craft Room. Today we're making watermelon pinwheels or um, windmills. Um, nice and easy to make and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, right, so we pop that to one side and then the first thing we do is we need a double-sided piece of paper with green on one side and red on the other. So we simply glue those two together. Um, a hint when you're gluing paper, um, because we need to cover the whole surface with glue, if you sort of hold down one side and then glue away from yourself all the way along this line, um, and then hold down this side and glue away from the middle towards the edge along this line um, because if you if you run the glue across the side you're likely to pull up the edge of the paper and break it uh, and rip it so cover it with glue stick it together um, so that you end up with a double sided piece so I'm not going to bore you with putting glue on paper now um, and then watching it dry, no fun for anybody. But here's a piece that I've stuck together already. Um, it does curl up a bit at the edges, but don't worry about that because we're going to cut it and fold it and you'll never know. Right, um, most of us have A4 paper, or here in the UK we have A4 paper. I think in America you're virtually the same. I think there's maybe sort of half an inch in it or if that. Um, to get it into a square, which is what we need to make our lovely windmill, um, you can measure it out with a ruler, but one of the easiest ways is just to take the edge, um, the short edge, and then to fold it along the long edge and line them up together. And then we can just put a crease in there because we're going to put a crease in there later for our folding anyway. So just pop a crease in. And then if you cut along this line here, you'll end up with a big green triangle which you can then open up and have a big square. So I'll just cut that bit off so we don't need that bit. There we go. So now I open it up and I've got a square. Um, we've already got a nice crease down one side and we want to have a crease going the other way diagonally as well so I'm just going to fold that over and pop that in so now we've got two creases um, once we're on one side oh look see I've made a bit of a mess there in fact I'm just going to trim that bit off we don't need that little bit there it won't matter it won't show once you've made your windmill um, we want to cut about two-thirds of the way down towards that middle section but making sure we don't go all the way through it so I'm just going to cut along that folded line about two-thirds of the way through and there we go and I'll fold it the other way as well and again I'm going to cut about two-thirds of the way through you can measure it if you want to be really accurate but I'm not sure we really need to worry to be honest so then we end up with four little sections green on one side red on the other okay and now I've got a hole punch I've got a single hole punch you can use the double ones as well but just use one of them and we're going to hole punch into um, each second one of these as we work our way round. Oopsie, I don't know if you can hear that, that's my dog investigating under the table. Uh, we've got a lovely yellow Labrador who's quite inquisitive. So I'm just going to make a hole in this one and then I'm going to miss one and make a hole in the next one. Okay, as we go round, oops, pop it in there. Sometimes my hole puncher catches a little bit which is a bit annoying and there we go so this one and the next one down oh, that dog's still padding about under my feet oh he's, <laughs> he's sitting on my feet oh dear it's a really hot sunny day here today it's not what I need um miss one and then we go on to the next one oops put it in the little slot there we go okay so now we've got a hole onto each second point 
going all the way around. Okay, now the inside red is obviously going to be our um, the inner part of our watermelon and then these sections with the holes are going to loop over, get the idea, and become the outer section of the watermelon. So the part of the watermelon inner without the hole on is the bit where I want to start drawing my seeds because the hole's going to go over and this is the part that I'm going to see the section without the hole. So I'm going to take my black marker and I'm, I can just draw some little seeds into that section there. Little sort of teardrops, aren't they really? And you can do as many or as few as you like. Oh dear, I've made that one a bit of a funny shape, haven't I? Never mind. There we go. To be honest, I could have done with a slightly thicker pen. It would have been a bit, um, a bit quicker. Go round. So again, I'm going to this one opposite the hole. Oh, I've got a butterfly in here now. It's just made its way out. We've been so blessed with gorgeous sunny weather. And we've actually just been having watermelon with our lunch as well. It's one of my favourite things for the summer. It always just feels so summery, doesn't it? There we go. So we colour those in. You can take obviously a lot more time and care <laughs> with your uh, seeds than I am. I'm a bit higgledy-piggledy, but never mind. Okay, round, and then I'm going to go the same here. So we want the opposite section to the hole. And then the pointy bits of the seeds is pointing into the middle. There we go. Doo -doo -doo. Around. I'll try and speed this up. Oops. When I uh, <laughs> when I pop this out for you to see this video, the joys of technology. That's probably enough on there actually. So again, opposite side. There we are. Here we go. Doo -doo -doo. I might just put one a bit closer into the middle there. All right, so mine are a little bit rough and ready, but it gives you an idea. Um, so now, if you can see, we're going to, when we actually make the, the pinwheel, so those um, bits with holes are going to fold in. So I want to make the darker stripes of my um, watermelon outer green. Um, has those sort of dark stripes. I want them to go from this point through the middle hole and out down the middle. I don't need to go all the way round because it actually doesn't show. So if I flip that over and the line I'm going to make, I've just got a, um, a green sharpie and the line I'm going to make is sort of somewhere down there. Um, and then I just did a little squiggle with my pen down that line. You can sort of vary the widths of it. it doesn't have to be um, particularly symmetrical obviously it's representing a living thing and they would they would vary wouldn't they so just work my way around doing the same thing with all of those I do a rough squiggle try and keep it a little bit random actually I think it looks a bit better and, and again I don't need to go all the way because it's not actually going to show although you can if you want to make the back look um, prettier I suppose you could go all the way down the back oopsie oh dear I don't want to do that on my backdrop wipe that away quick quick permanent marker okay all the way down again I'm being quick so that you're not waiting around for ages watching me do this but you can take your time and um, make it look a bit nicer it's just to give you the rough idea there we go. the dog's got bored and gone off loves to eat watermelon but uh, not his favorite thing to see me make one okay right so that's that and now when we curl those pieces in You've actually got the, oh, wrong one. 
sort of the, the stripes of the watermelon on the outside. Now we've got to make a little hole into the very, very middle of that. Um, you can use a pin and poke it through. I tend to use a piece of a pair of scissors and I'm just going to double up this spare bit that I had there with the paper just so it's thick so I'm not making a hole in my table and pop it underneath that middle bit and you might want to get a grown-up to help you with this one and I'm just going to take the point of the scissors be really careful about this blade you don't want to cut yourself and just I'm giving it a little oh, a little wiggle a wiggle and a push and a wiggle and a push. A wiggle, perhaps a twist, twist and a push. And I can see it's just going, going through. So it doesn't have to be a huge hole. Can you see that? It really is just, you know, pretty small. There we go. And that's all I need. Now I've got a split pin. I used to love making dolls with um, little moving arms and legs when I was a little girl with these. My mum showed me how. Um, so I've got a split pin. You can get them in different lengths. This one is about an inch and that's, that's about right really. Okay, so now I'm going to take one hole and pop my split pin in and then put it through the next one. Oops, I shouldn't have opened it up. But to show you it makes it trickier to get through actually. There we go, and then I'm feeding through the next one, working my way round all four corners, just curling them in and going round. And then that um, point of the split pin, I'm going to feed, you can see, just through the hole I've just made in the middle. Okay, so we've got the windmill shape on that side with a split pin in the middle push it all the way through and I'm just going to gently open it out just to secure it in place for now um, we're going to actually put that back together again and put it into its stalk in a, um, a moment but it's just to hold that into place so that's that and then the stalk I made out of a straw I've got these lovely jumbo drinking straws um, that I made and you can sort of reuse them as well. I know it's all, we're all against plastic drinking straws at the moment, um, but I don't mind using up the supply that I've got and I don't mind reusing them for crafts. So perhaps when my children are finished with this, I can take this off and um, actually cut the little end off that I've used. And I've still got a lovely workable piece that I can use for lots of other crafts as well. And they're really robust and they do last a long time and you can use them over and over again. So I've got different colours. Um, but I think we'll just go with yellow again as it shows up quite nicely on here. So all I did with this jumbo straw was to flatten the end a little bit and then take my punch again and I want to make a little hole in the middle. Okay, I have to push quite hard because we're going through two layers of plastic. But I think, oh it did it first time actually, there we go. All right, so we've got a hole through there. And I take my pinwheel and I'm just going to shut those pieces together again and then feed it through the hole I've just made in the straw and then pop that on there. When I'm, op when I'm opening it to secure it onto the other side, I'm not going to push it all really, really tightly together because then the actual um, watermelon pinwheel, pinwheel won't be able to spin. So I want to give it, leave it with a little bit of slack, if that makes sense, before I pin it back. And before I tape it into place, I just want to check that that does actually spin round, which it does. Okay. So then I just secure it with a piece of tape. Oops, I only need a tiny, tiny bit. Um, it'd probably be all right without the tape, to be honest, but um, I tend to oops, err on the side of caution. There we go. Okay, so it's all taped and secure on the back and then spins round and round. Easy peasy. And there we are two watermelon uh, pinwheels. Just so summery, aren't they?
Well, I hope you have fun with that. Do visit our blog for lots more ideas. Um, enjoy the sunny, shun sunshiny weather while we've got it, because while here in the UK, it never ever lasts, does it? Um, we have been really, really lucky, actually, though. Right, happy summer, happy crafting. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>